Hello and welcome back to this YouTube tutorial channel. So today I have prepared a little project for you. It shows an example how the DLL can look like. For that I have some files here which mainly contain boilerplate code which is code we just have to use because of the structure of Godot. And then also an example player class yeah, this could be every custom code, every custom class that we want to use. So it's our gameplay code, which we want to compile into the DLL. I uploaded the used code to GitHub. So if you want, the link for the download is in the description. First of all, we copy all files into our Visual Studio project. And in Visual Studio, we can right click on the solution, add existing files, and then select all files to add them to the project. And now everything gets sorted properly. Now for the boilerplate code. On the one hand, we have the root CPP and the root header file. Both are normal empty C++ files, but they are needed for compiling. And on the other hand, we need the Godot library.cpp. Here it's very important to register every custom class here, like the example player class, so the engine can find your gameplay code in the DLLs. Now we come to our custom code. Here I prepared a simple player class. The player header includes the Godot HPP, the kinematic body 2D HPP, and the input HPP. And is used in the Godot namespace. Yeah, our player inherits from a kinematic body 2D, and with the input HPP it is possible in the function of the player CPP to track the input events and also for each direction. So up, down, left and right, the common move and slide function of Godot gets called with the right direction. And theoretically, your player then should move into the right direction. Now we export the wall gameplay code as DRL for where we need to rebuild the solution. Ah, okay, here you can see some of the cryptic error messages, which unfortunately are not rare when you work with DLLs. But in this case, I got luck and only forgot that we only have the 64 bit debug and release version of the DLL. So, above here, we can only build for debug and release in the 64 bit version. And yeah, quickly select the right one and rebuild again. So when you get the message, rebuild all succeeded, everything is fine. And now you should find the DLL file in your export folder. Right here in the C++ DLL export folder, which we chose for our output directory. Now we test the DRL in a new Godot project. Therefore, we create a new folder and name it Godot Test Project and start the normal Godot engine, which you can download on the Godot homepage. So, nothing special here. Create a new project in the folder we just created. Select current folder. Okay. So, when Godot is done setting up the project, you can simply copy the DLL file from the DLL exports folder into the new created project and then jump right back into the engine. Since we let the player class inherit from a kinematic body 2D, it would make sense to test everything in a 2D scene. For this 2D node, we add a kinematic body 2D also a sprite for this one and a collision shape 2D. 
and for the shape we add a circle and into the sprite we can load the default Godot icon and yeah. That's only for the purpose to have something we can see and work with. Now we can debug the project. Then you get asked if you want to save the scene to what we say, yes sir, and save it. Now we see, yeah, our icon, but at the moment we can't move it because there's actually no code. Then we close the window and press the debug button again. Now we get asked about a default starting scene, so we press select and set the node to the we saved a moment before and close the window again. We do this so our game will find a start scene when we try the DLL with an exported game. So now it's time to integrate our DLL with the GD native features. Therefore we create a new resource above here and we need a GD native library. Down here in the settings, you see that we can load a dynamic library, so DLL files. In Windows 64 bit, we can add our Godot tutorial DLL. And then we save the wall thing as testgdlib. Here it's important that the file ending is correct. We need a gdnlib. So a GD native library, then save everything. And now we can add a script to our kinematic body 2D. Here we need a native script. It shouldn't be a built-in script and it's really important that the inheritance and the class name match with the code you wrote into the DLL. So we want a kinematic body 2D and the player class. Now we create the script. Here we don't even need more code, so no glue code. We just have to tell our GD native script from which GD native library the code should come. So we need to load in our just created native library. So let's save everything and test it. Here we see that we can move our player around and we got this just in help with C++ and the DLL code. At last we can test everything in an exported version of the game. Here you add a normal Windows desktop preset and export that. Yeah, in our folder where our Godot project is located, you can find following three files, the project exe, the project package and the DLL file. For testing, we copy everything to the desktop and when we start the game here, everything should work normally as expected, but now the disadvantage of this method, when we move the DLL away from the exe or the DLL get disrupted for whatever reason and somebody tries to start the game, then here in the background you can see that GD Native can't find our DLL. In game we also can't do anything no matter what we press. The player doesn't find his code and just won't move around. And that's it. So yeah, and that's really it for <laughs> this uh, tutorial. I hope I could help you a little and you enjoyed this video. So as always, leave your questions, suggestions and comments below. And I hope I can see you the next time. Bye!